If you beat someone in Swiss, yep. they normally knock you out of the tournament. Yep. So, Dobsy's certainly got to keep that in mind as we see the players getting ready here. Dax just putting his headset on, getting all of the uh, audio things set up. You can see the players loading into the game. So we're just moments away now from kicking off. And I mean, today has been full of surprises. What's been the biggest surprise for you so far? Honestly, seeing Megabit eliminated from the competition by Kurt has to be biggest surprise personally because he was third in the Global Series or fourth. I mean, he's up there with Dax. And for Kurt to beat him when Kurt needs such a huge tournament, I'd say that's a big shock result. And uh, Kurt obviously continuing his role towards his grand finals. Needs to pretty much win the tournament to do so, but he's given himself an incredible shot at doing just that. But enough about those two players because the game is underway. It's time for our next matchup of the day is, of course, Dubsy taking on Dax. The artist taking on the man who basically needs to win the tournament. Yeah, so Dax wasn't able to score a single goal against Dubsy in the Swiss stage. And we saw in the interview with Nightwatch, if you go 1-0 down against Dax, that's when you start to struggle. However, if you can take the lead, if you can start putting a couple of goals past him, is he going to be able to use his slow, methodical style to get himself back into the game? Of course, he is able to. He does have the ability to, but he's certainly going to be harder than his typical game style of going 1-0 up and then just holding on to that ball. I always feel like when you play against... Dax, you have to, your concentration levels have to be 100%. The moment that you switch off is when he bursts alive. He just waits. He's, he's happy to wait all day, to be honest with you, to create a chance, as long as that chance is a clear-cut one that he can score from. But Dubsy just managed to pinch the ball away from him there, and he will win the free kick as the referee pulls the play back. It's the way that Dax utilizes the radar, and he really watches where he can ping that ball to from left to right and passes it around the back four and will just be very patient until he just pops that ball up to a through ball to someone running through. But of course, pretty much a lot of players in FIFA 19 have the ability to do that, but Dax just does it a little bit better than the majority at the moment. There's Dubsy, he's prodding his way forward here. And prodding his way at Dax's defense. Havertz is dropping a little bit deep here. Good to see him in the starting lineup. There's a Croquetta, there's two. A little bit of space here. Vieira can't get there. But the finish wasn't perfect, and just at the last second, Dax managed to get a player in the way, but the second wave of attack is coming forward now. Hullet gets the ball out to Ronaldo. Great pass inside, but again, it's Van Dijk. But Hullet again wins the ball, and finally, Dax gets possession. Some heavy challenges coming in from Dubsy there to try and win the ball back in those dangerous areas, and it's a good idea as well. If you can get that ball so far up the pitch, Dax is going to be a little bit... He's going to struggle to deal with that instant ability you have to attack. You can have several players being able to pounce on that ball and going for a pass. But Dubsy almost had a shot on goal there. He went through a small period where he was just dribbling with the ball and going nowhere. No skill moves or anything. It was almost like he was trying to think in his head, which skill move should I do? How am I going to get past him? But then he went for a croquetta. And I feel like at this point, croquettas are becoming a little bit predictable when they're used in so many different areas. Yes, OK, they're strong. Are players overusing it a little bit too much now? I'd say arguably yes. I'd have to agree with you at certain points. Obviously, it's incredibly powerful skill moves, as we all well know at this stage in FIFA 19. However, I do I do agree with you. I think sometimes players, there are other options in certain areas, and they just go to the croquetta because they know how effective it can be when it's maybe not the best choice, but sometimes it's just a direct little oh. ball over the top to find the head of Ronaldo that could create chances. Unfortunately, there for Dubsy. The header wasn't on target, but you have to say, if we look at the scores from this match in the Swiss rounds, that 5-0 win to Dubsy, you can see why at the moment, Dan. He's controlling this game. And it's whether he's going to try and take advantage of the fact that De Gea is in goal for Dax and maybe go for some of those looping headers and try and use the fact that De Gea doesn't have the reach of Van der Sar and you sometimes can just slot a header into one of those top corners. So we'll see whether that is something he applies to the rest of this game. Well, here's Cancelo then in that fullback position. Ronaldo out wide. Interesting to have a look at Dax's starting lineup as well because we know he has sometimes used, for example, Luka Modric out wide in those wide cam areas in the 4 2 3 1. But it looks like a fairly standard setup so far for him. Hullet now for the first time really getting forward here for Dax. But the first time that that danger is presented in front of Dubsy. He makes a fantastic tackle and now we can stream forward once again. And I don't know if this is intentional from Dubsy or whether it's just a, a happy mistake, but it's just the way he's allowing Dax to have a little bit more time on the ball. So Dax is being encouraged to run into areas, therefore not playing his normal passing game. Well, here's Neymar. Now he's found Ronaldo just a second 
for him to maybe think about that shot, but the space disappeared quicker than it appeared, to be honest with you. Van Dijk came across and dealt with it. Well, I think you're right. I think Dobsey's really posing some questions to Dax, and Dax is usually the kind of player that asks questions of his opponent. Sometimes when you encourage your opponent to just run at you and you give them that little bit of space, their mind suddenly goes, oh, actually, I could attack goal here. And then as soon as you see that little switch of movement, you can then just pressure with several defenders, and it's very hard to react quickly to it. Well, that was a lovely little ball over the top there from Dax, but he's happy to recycle, as we know. Moving his way up the pitch, inch by inch sometimes it feels, but it's all very deliberate, all very orchestrated. Cancelo now, just waiting for that player to get close enough, for that pass to be effective. Take him out of the game for those few moments, and now you're seeing Dax, here comes the pace into the attack, Neymar into Vieira. Dax now, still waiting. Almost goading Dubsey into making a tackle at this point. Hull it. And if there's a pass counter, someone at home is counting those passes. Make sure to tweet us and let us know how many passes have been in this attack, Dan, because it's still going here from Dax. I was going to say, if this results in a goal, this certainly will be up there for maybe Adidas play of the day because the fact that he is just keeping Dubsey at bay, keeping Dubsey away from the ball, but also luring some of Dubsey's players out of position where eventually he's going to slot in. Here's CR7, still has the ball here, Dax. He's had it for around 10 in-game minutes. Finally finds Neymar, turns back, pull it into a Bappe, chance for a shot, and just as we saw the green thing light up there, the defender managed to get a block, and a second block from Virgil van Dijk. Means that finally the ball goes out of play, but it's still going to be Dax on the attack here with Cancelo. And you can see why people do not enjoy playing against this man. Van Dijk almost found a player there, but now maybe a chance on the counter-attack yeah, here, Dan. This is where Dax has to be dangerous, uh, has to be concerned, because when he does have the ball, when he's playing around with so much possession, Dubsy is naturally going to build up a little bit of frustration of wanting to get that ball back, and he should just try and hit straight away on the counter-attack. But if Dubsy's smart, He's actually going to say, look, I don't need to hit him on the counter-attack. I've beaten this player before. I can outplay him. Maybe I can keep the ball. Maybe I can play a little bit of Dax's own game. And I think that attack from Dax there was a, almost a perfect demonstration. And as we hear the half-time whistle go, of what I was talking about before the game even started, concentration levels against a player like Dax are so, so vital. If you dive in once in that passage of play, all of a sudden, for Dax, the entire Morning pitch opens half. up. And you know... If there is one player free, he will find him at some point. That's exactly what he's wanting to do. He's almost trying to encourage those players to dive in or to, to, to switch to a different player so he can get a little bit of room to make that final pass, to see that final ball. But in fairness to Dubsy, he wasn't playing ball. He, he saw that Dax, what Dax was doing. He said, OK, I'm not going to make a mistake here. I'm not going to switch onto the wrong man. I'm not going to overly press you here. You can have the ball on your, in your half of the pitch. I really don't care. Yes, OK, Dax got into a dangerous area very briefly, but Dubsy was there. He applied pressure at the right time, and he managed to make the tackle. Dax on the attack from the start here. Ronaldo into Neymar. Little movement out of his feet there with a the drag back and went for that left-footed finesse into the far corner. Again, defender in the way, though, for Dubsy. Corner now. For the Leverkusen man. Ronaldo doing some defensive work, but still can't win that ball back, and Dax... Trying to bait a defender out with a croquetta. Cancelo now into Ronaldo. Almost got the shot away. Keeps possession. Space here for Ronaldo. Just trying to get that body towards goal. Finally strikes it at goal. And after all the pressure, a save from Van der Sar keeps the deadlock intact. And now it's whether Dubsy can try and do anything with his bit of possession because. Dax is making his possession count in that he is eating away the clock and he's also frustrating his opponent, but Dubsy's attacks have kind of just died very early. He hasn't been able to get into the areas maybe he would like to. He hasn't been able to play the through balls that he's been looking for, and you can also accredit that to how well Dax has been defending as well, dragging his central defensive midfielders into pretty annoying situations for Dubsy. Yeah, I get it. It's something we talked about a little bit in previous tournaments as well. When you have to work so hard, to get the ball back and you finally get it back. Sometimes you can give it away almost immediately, but Dubsy burst into life there himself. And now he has a chance for the set piece. And he's just going to play this one short, which is a good idea. And the dink to the back post could work out, oh, but it's going to be offside. That, that must have been so close. Very, very fortunate there because you saw Cristiano Ronaldo waiting, 
pleading with the linesman to keep his flag down there because he was completely free in the middle. That was the simplest of finishes you could have asked for. But Dak survives there. The assistant referee making that decision. And now the Frenchman finds Ronaldo. Hullet looking for that run outside of Mbappe, just waiting for the moment to find that pass. Goes down. Oh, and that is going to be a free kick here. Referee pulls it back for the infringement. Dax, runners off the ball. Neymar off to Mbappe. Can't find the scoop turnaround, Militao. We haven't seen one of those work today on stream anyway. Of course, we have seen it work a variety of times throughout the season of FIFA 19, but it just seems like that player is getting closed down too quickly, especially from that area. I wonder whether people haven't experimented enough with free kicks throughout FIFA 19, certainly at tournaments anyway, but I guess you are going to go for the safer option naturally. I think possession is a big part of it as well. Sometimes you feel, I feel like if I go for a direct free kick and the goalkeeper makes a save, I'm very vulnerable on the counter attack. Absolutely true. Maybe that's playing into uh, the short free kick routines we're seeing a lot from players at the moment. But Dax now still controlling the pace of the game as he does so much. Mbappe now inside the box. Ruketa, Van Dijk has to get across and does so. The pause being queued by Dax and potentially just a few fresh legs here to try and Oof. initiate something. A little bit heavy from Van Dijk. Yeah, similarly to the game we saw earlier where it was very tight for the first leg. When it comes down to playoffs, when it comes down to the final tournament of the season before the E-World Cup, there's always going to be nerves involved. There's always going to be that I don't want to lose mentality of I'm going to keep the ball because if my opponent doesn't have the ball, they're not going to score against me. But yeah. you're also reluctant to make one of those big plays to try and score a goal because you know how it can go against you. Well, Dobsy then with possession for the first time in a while, to be honest with you, in this final third. And now's his chance to try and work a position there. Gets a little bit fortunate, and Mbappe completely unmarked. And Dax rolled the dice. And it came up right for him there, Eusebio. And Mbappe goes to the second drag back there, change of direction, and wins the free kick. Now, can Dubsy do something that Dax could not? Can he find a way to goal? Eusebio goes for the far corner and finds the back of the net. And there you go, there is something a little bit different. Yes, OK, it was a layoff, but it wasn't the double run over. Instead, it was just right to the man of Eusebio. And it's just a simple touch to the right to beat that man. That's the difference. When you've got that fourth man running onto the ball, you're at a sprint speed, so you're much more vulnerable to players who are closing you down. Brilliant free kick, and that's finally the deadlock broken. So for all the possession, and I'm going to say for all the dominance of 73 minutes of FIFA 19, Dax is chasing the game. And it comes from that set piece. Well thought out by Dubsy. And a stern look still on his face, on both of these players' faces. And whilst this wouldn't impact Dax's season at all, really, if he were to lose this game, aside from the prize money and the pride, you've got to look at the other players around him. Dasari, Tex, Megabit, they're all going to be looking at him saying, all right, well, if he's losing to players like this, what can I learn? Can I implement this into my game plan? And maybe then I could beat Dax. Because as it stands and the way the seeding process works for the E-World Cup, Dax would be with Dasari in Group B. And that makes things always more difficult. If Dasari's anywhere near you in a bracket, in a group, you know you're going to be in for a tough game. And then the build up there, Dubsy, again, testing Dax's defense there, looking for that chip into the first time volley. We've seen a lot of them at this tournament, and I'm sure we will moving forward as well towards those grand finals. Sandro now, and there is a runner in behind here. Dax was looking for that run. And Militao will spread the play now to the Costa, and switching the play is such a, a good way of taking a few seconds out of the game now. Yeah, I'm wondering whether Dax is just going to have to try and change his game style going into leg number two here because even though he's had the dominance and he's had the possession, he's got nothing to show for it. And that might affect him mentally going into leg number two unless he's able to achieve a goal in these final five minutes. And then he'll be more than happy to play the same. But I feel like this is kind of what happened in this Swiss stage. Dubsy took a goal lead and then Dubsy was able to build on that without Dax able to reply. I feel Dax is just one, you know, extra pass maybe extra skill move extra turn in the right direction when he's around goal away from finding an equalizer though hazard now onto that right foot you can see he's kind of knocking yeah. at the door as we like to say 
and he's just not able to break in at this point. Yeah, Dubsy not letting him in indeed. Dubsy just putting that one man in the right place and ensuring that there's always a body to block the ball from Dax. And Dax reluctant to play that extra ball because he doesn't see it as a high percentage chance of getting the goal. Instead, he's taking these shots that also really aren't a high percentage either. With two minutes left now, I've added on time. It looks like the final attack might actually go to Dax here. And he has won the ball back quite high up the yeah, pitch. Yeah, Eden Hazard's the player who wins it as well. And, oh, what a ball that is. Where's the goalkeeper? Who's going to win this foot race? Van der Sar gets a piece of it. Mbappe will collect those pieces, however. Dax trying to turn away from the attention of the defender. Oh. Sandro into Ronaldo. Hazard on his right front. Dax with a chance. And he fluffs his lines. Corner. Hazard in towards Virgil van Dijk. Van der Sar turns it behind another corner. The 95th minute now. How much added time do you want, referee? Blow your blooming whistle. He's going to play it one more time, though, oh. but it's not going to be enough for Mbappe to get the shot away. And it's going to be a 1-0 victory for Dubsy after the first leg. But there were chances there for Dax. There were a couple of yellow timings there as well in that final moment with Hazard it was time yellow if that was green could have been 1-1 yeah completely agree with you there if that is time green then that's that final back of the letter, over the match opinion. we'll take a look at the highlights now but from that uh, game. the other it one it's not a goal affair there, Dan. and you have to say it was just this one free kick was the only it's real chance of the game to be honest for Dubsy but it doesn't matter about how many chances as we know so many times the story is who can take that chance and i don't Maybe think that's it was expected the only chance he, as well. he was running with it. Vieira he had selected and he was going right towards that fourth man expecting that sprint on instead just a little layoff to Eusebio and a decent finish as well uh, a nice finesse shot just off the post and normally we talk about you know what's Dax going to change here or you know what's going to be different here I genuinely think, like, you know, he didn't play a, a bad half of FIFA there, to be honest with you. I thought that he was knocking on that door. As I said, towards the end of that game, as we saw that final chance as well, it's just that tiny little moment in that final third, the decisive moment that he just seemed to be missing. And I need to give credit as well to Dubsy in the way he was defending that. When we get to this stage of the season throughout any iteration of FIFA, you are always going to have very closely contested games from players who know how to play the game. They know how to defend, they know how to hold the ball, and they know how to get the ball in the back of the net. And it can come down to these tiny, minuscule moments of, am I going to play this pass to the right or the left? Am I going to croquetta left or right? Am I going to shoot or am I going to chip? All of these little tiny things. And do you know what I think the one thing that is always catches people off guard? right in those last moments, the little half drag back. Not a full drag, the little half drag back. Because someone will always try and position their defender when they are the defending player to look for that shift to the left or the right. And it gives you that little bit of space. And Dax used that to create that chance for Eden Hazard towards the end of the game. But it will be Dax now into the second leg who has kickoff. And Bappe now inside the box straight away. Big chance here, Van der Sar, another big save. Yep, a reverse in kits now. So. That's try right from right the beginning. To to, just to make sure there's no confusion. Not just for you watching, but for myself. I just thought I'd say it out loud. Um, but a nice attack from Dax early on. But he did get the green finish. That's what we need to see more of. When I've looked at players' tweets throughout this tournament of why they've been eliminated, a lot of them have said either I didn't get my timings down or I didn't defend well enough. Well, get your timings down and you should be fine because he's defending pretty successfully. But Dubsy knows what job he has to do now in this second half. And sometimes that can cloud the judgment ever so slightly. I'd like to see him play the same kind of game that he did in that first half. Dax wins the ball back now. And for Dax, it's, he loves to play this patient game. But when you are chasing the game down, you have to be a bit more direct, quite simply because you have to create as many chances in the time left in the game. Yeah, unfortunately, when it's so early in leg number two, I don't think it's very easy to hold on to a 1-0 lead. Sometimes it's even better to just think that actually you're 0-0 at the moment and you have to go for a goal because then you're more likely to go 2-0 up rather than trying to concede one of those goals. But players work differently. Mentality, of course, is something we discuss very often. And we're learning more and more about these players and how they react to each iteration of FIFA. And this is a beautiful little passing play here from Dubsy as he slides his way towards goal with a croquetta. Almost like a speed skater moving towards the edge of the box. And now there is space out wide here for Cristiano Ronaldo. Goes early looking for R9. Good position in though from Van Dijk. And I want to talk a little bit about Edwin van der Sar because he has been phenomenal for everyone who's used him so far here in Hamburg. Yeah, goalkeepers were some of 
very much a talking point throughout the season. Who are you going to use? We saw uh, Neuer being used early on. We saw De Gea then coming in. We've seen people try Jens Lehmann. But now we're seeing mid-icon Van der Sar. We're not even seeing prime Van der Sar. And the main reason being, which I have touched on a few times in broadcast, is that he just has better reactions. So he is going to be able to just get that last-minute save. And, of course, he's six foot six, which helps as well. He can reach pretty much every area in the goal. We'll have to see if he can reach some, one of these potential shots that's going to be coming in from Dax now. And Bappe, again, waiting and baiting oh. those defenders. But Dobsey is reading it like a book. He will not take that bait. He's not hungry right now. Yeah, Dobsey's doing so well. He has Dax very firmly in his palms right now and it's just whether he's going to be able to squeeze him out and secure a victory here and what a victory it would be as well eliminating one of the biggest players in the scene on the xbox at the moment but also getting himself closer to a chance at the e-world cup i've done the mathematics and realistically he has to make the final if he is to have any chance of qualifying for the E-World Cup. And I tell you what, taking down someone who's third in the leaderboard is going to give you fantastic confidence. Well, here's Neymar then. Cricketer cancels it halfway through just to shift his weight. Ferdinand steps in there. Another one of those, shall we say, tournament one players that we've seen pretty much used for the entirety of FIFA 19. Rio Ferdinand still holding it down in that central defensive Area of the pitch. Dax wins the ball back well now. Pull it into Neymar. A little bit of a poor touch. Just shows too much to Van Dijk. And now Havertz can come away for Dubsy. But again, a game of very few chances so far. And it's a weird one to watch for all the other players in the scene as well. I mean, I heard the reactions for players watching the previous game. And the game we saw that went to that final penalty with the red card. And everyone is going to be wanting to see kind of how people are adapting, how people are playing going into the E-World Cup. But then you've also got players like Zidane, like Abinio, who are currently sat in 15th and 16th. Well, here's Havertz then. Good tackle there for Dax. He can't win the ball back, though. It just falls back into the possession of Dubsy. R9 into Neymar. Vieira, great move here from Dubsy. The finish lets him down, though. For players like Zidane and Abinio, they're going to be saying, well, I want Dubsy to lose this game. I want Dax to go through because that is not a player that can then pit me and take my position. And there is entirely possibly a chance that Abinio and Zidane do survive. They do keep their positions. The same for Rafsu. Rafsu should pretty much have already guaranteed himself. Tass is up there as well. We might already know the top 16. Who knows what's going to happen, though, tomorrow. There is still a chance that maybe the likes of Painter or Dubsy could still creep their way in. And, of course, we still have Kurt to play as well. So many different permutations still on the table here for that final 16 on the Xbox. It's been a crazy tournament so far. We've seen upsets, we've seen heartbreak, and you just get the feeling that we're not quite done yet as far as storylines are concerned. But here comes Dax. Again, surgically working his way towards goal. And Bappe trying to wrestle with Da Costa. And in that particular circumstance, it's Da Costa who gets the 1-2-3. Da Costa really has impressed me with how he's performed in this tournament, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if he just becomes a staple right back for everyone at the E-World Cup. Again, it does come down to preference, Tackle. and we've seen a lot of Dumfries too. But I really like Da Costa, and I like the natural link-up with Havertz as well. Well, here's Sandro moving forward, that flashback, Alexandro. Mbappe now. You can see how many men that Dobsy has behind the board. It's a case of Dax having to unlock the puzzle that's been put in front of him at the moment. And he is struggling. He just can't move that ball quickly around the 18-yard box to create that space. And that's what he's known for. But Jalsic Cancelo says, it's time to go forward, boys. But then he just gives the ball away, having worked so hard to win it back. That's very uncharacteristic for Dax as well. He's usually very good at playing the ball around in the middle of the field. He's not going to be able to get the final opportunity of this first half of leg number two. It's going to be Dubsy, maybe, to get a shot away. Yeah, and it's Neymar who finds Vieira as well. Havertz, we know he can go either side. The heel to heel, the drag back, and oh! Everything Almost a finish. Oh my. There is the half-time whistle. We thought that one was in, to be honest. We saw the green timing light up. And I was fully expecting that to just be nestling in that far corner. I mean, keeper was beaten, the position... Positioning seemed all good. Maybe the player slightly off balance, which is why we saw the ball just go wayward there. But that is a warning for PSG's Dax. And you can see in his eyes, he knows he needs to focus now because he only has 45 minutes to get back into this game. It's not quite the 5-0 drubbing that we saw in the Swiss rounds between these two players. So Dax definitely knows he has a chance to get back into this game. He just needs that, that one pass 
That one little bit of movement, but Dubsy has not switched off at all throughout this game so far. Every single movement that we've seen from Dax has been counteracted by Dubsy perfectly. 45 minutes left then for Dax to find a goal to elongate this match. Send it towards extra time or will it be Dubsy? Who, as we keep saying, keeps the dream alive, keeps the flame burning. R9, Croquetta, step over inside the box as well on the heel to heel. I tell you what, he baited the tackle there from Dax. And Van Dijk had to get that one right, and luckily for the Frenchman, he did indeed. And of course, money comes into the equation as well. When you get each round, when you get further and further, that money gets better and better. 10,000 available for the winner in this one. Vieira now inside to R9. You just feel that something has to come from one of these attacks. But again, Danny De Costa just steps in. And he's been winning that battle in the fullback areas. We know how much Dax loves to use the likes of Mbappe, Havertz, Neymar to find those quick passes in and around the defenders. But when you've got six foot two fullback in, in Danny De Costa, it makes it so much more difficult. I mean, it's very difficult getting through half of these defenders that we see now with the statistics that have been provided for them across updates throughout the season. And we've almost got a role reversal in this game now because Dubsy has this 1-0 lead and he's been holding on to the ball and playing the possession game and maybe just hoping that he can restrict the amount of chances for Dax. But Dax has regained possession and he's still being patient. He is not being affected by the time yet. He's more than happy to play his own game, his natural game. Ten men behind the ball at the moment for Dubsy. It's only Cristiano Ronaldo who's the man ahead of the ball at this point. Ronaldo, there is a little run there from Hullet. Might have just dragged a player away for a second here for Dax. Neymar. Here comes Rude Hullet back in that more familiar position. Neymar again, Danny Da Costa. I'll tell you what, this is a man of the match performance from him. Is it him or is it Dubsy? I think it might be Dubsy controlling him, is who we should really give credit to. Absolutely incredible at the back. One thing that Tex has done very well, being the number one player in the world, is focusing on areas not just on offense, but also about defending and closing out games. And that's exactly what Dubsy needs to do here. Quick He's question for you, Dan. Sorry to cut you off. Has Dax had a shot in this game? Because I can't remember one off the top of my head. I mean, and when you're chasing a game, that quite simply isn't good enough. Right in the opening stage, his first attack, he had at least a shot in the early stages, but since then has really struggled to get into those dangerous areas. Uh, mainly because of the pressure that Dubsy has been applying. Needs to find something here. You can see the pause has been queued up by PSG. Dax hit. Change of tactics required. And that's not going to help the situation in any way, shape or form. Ronaldo now back inside for Dubsy. Neymar takes the shot early. Will win the corner. I think you're more than happy to take corners in that situation as well. Yes, OK, you didn't get the shot that you wanted away. Uh, but corners can be very threatening, although we've not seen as many scored this tournament. And perhaps that is because of the inclusion of De Costa and Dumfries as well in that fullback position. And the likes of Varane shifting over to left back. We've got Militao there as well. Some changes for Dax then. He's playing the 4-2-3-1 at the moment. And he might have some pre-planned tactics to switch over to. But it's Messi who's going to be introduced on the pitch. And maybe that left foot bending one in from the edge of the area might just be his key getting back into this game. So as we can see there, Dubsy sticking with the 4-2-3-1. Defensively, it's worked for him at the moment. We'll have to see what Dax has got up his sleeve. We know he's got that 4 triple 2 if he needs it. It's just a case of if it's going to be effective enough to find just one goal. And that's the thing, Dan, we have to kind of keep in mind is the fact that there is a lot of time still left in this game. And it is just a single goal separating these two players. Maybe it's going to come from the corner for Dubsy to make it a two-goal lead as Messi newly introduced. But Dubsy then keeping possession smartly here from that set piece. This could be up to Dax to up that pressure, get some more bodies flying towards that ball, win that ball back and start attacking your own. But Dubsy's moving it quicker than Dax can react at the moment. Eusebio! Save from De Gea. Corner here. Messi, Mbappe wins it back. Dax can go forward now. What a ball that is. Eusebio just waiting just too long there to get that pass across. And Militao comes in and picks his pocket. Yeah, I think Dax was hoping that there was going to be a quicker um, 
pace on his right side of midfield and a bit more urgency so he could have played that ball over the top and gone through on goal but unfortunately just dilly dallying on the ball ever so slightly gave the advantage to Dubsy here who is now going to play the ball all the way back to the goalkeeper 15 minutes left 15 minutes and then suddenly he's through to oh, the top big eight. mistake though Hazard comes in picks the pocket here Vieira to Hazard oh and again Dax just can't find that final pass Massive chance, though, for the Frenchman there. Yeah, a bit of a squeaky bum time there for, for Dubsy. You've got to be very careful if you're going to be trying to play the ball around against a player like Dax. Cancelo, then. Pushing forward now for Dax. You can see the player switching frantic. It's quick, and again, just that final pass from Dax. Doesn't find the player who is in that position to find a strike at goal. Dubsy now on the counter-attack. What a moment this could be for Dubsy as well. Ten minutes left. And the season's hopes of getting to the E-World Cup would still be alive by beating third in the world on the Xbox. Dax, what has he got left? Ten minutes to go. Can he get an equaliser here? Or is he going to fall short and go into the E-World Cup with not so great form? And you can see, I think... Oh, oh no, no! Massive mistake! Cristiano Ronaldo for Dax! Oh, Virgil. Virgil van Dijk for Dubsy. Well, that's mistake number two, though, for Dubsy. Maybe the nerves are starting to get to him a little bit as mistakes are coming left, right and centre. But now he has a chance to maybe put this game to bed. Or will he play it smart and keep the ball? Very intelligent recycling of the play here. Mbappe then, a chance for Dubsy to maybe finish this game off. Mbappe goes back inside to Ronaldo. Quick pass in, a quick shot! And that has to be the goal that keeps the dream alive for Dubsy. 2-0 now, and it looks like Dax could be out of the tournament. 42nd in the world, he came into this tournament, did Dubsy. And he's 2-0 up, and it would be his second victory over Dax this tournament. Five minutes left for Dax to get back into it. You have to think now this is definitely Dubsy's game. He hasn't created enough chances, Dan. It's just, it's just quite simple, to be honest with you. He has created, what, two, three, four chances in nearly you know two legs of FIFA. He's not going to make, I hate to say it, but if this comeback happens, I'll, I'll eat my imaginary hat. We'll find a hat for you to eat and make sure that happens. But sometimes you get players that just counteract others. And I feel like that is the case for Dubsy against Dax here. Dax likes to play slow, methodical football and pass it around and look for space and wait for mistakes. But Dubsy's not been making those mistakes when Dax has the ball. Dubsy's only made the mistakes when he was passing the ball around in defense himself. And mm. unfortunately for Dax, Dubsy was quick to react to make sure he didn't concede from those mistakes. Yeah, and his focus has been absolutely incredible in this game. Obviously, as you say, defensive errors have pretty much not existed until the last couple of minutes of the game where he's so close to picking up this win now. But this is the last roll of the dice now for Dax. He needs to change something. He needs to find some magic from somewhere. He needs to change something or he needs to change everything. Just throw everything forward at this point and get aggressive and see what you can do. Can he get back into this game? I mean... I have seen it happen. We've all seen it happen in these late stages of the games. If he gets something from the get-go here, then you never know. 86 minutes on the clock. Make that 87. And you can see Kante on the pitch here as well. And Vieira just steps in. As you said, Dan, it had to happen then. It had to happen now. And for Dubsy, this might just be a victory lap now. Mbappe into Ronaldo. Yosebio, they're queuing up here. Lionel Messi, smart, smart play from Dobsey. Yeah, don't even take the risk. You saw him celebrate, or sorry, you didn't see him celebrate. I saw him celebrate, and you heard the scream as soon as he made that interception with Vieira because he knew it was game, set, and match, and he knew he had taken down one of the giants of this FIFA community. Now there might be a chance here. There's barely any time on the clock. De Gea will pick the ball up. I think Dax knows this time. There's a scream of let's go coming in from Dobsey because he knows... That's another step closer to completing his task here in Hamburg. He's still a long way to go, but taking down the number three seed is a huge step towards it. It's certainly not the form that Dax would have wanted.